What's up guys? I am Constance and today we are going to be talking Shadowlands Covenants. I've had a lot of people requesting that I do a Covenant video in these last few days before Shadowlands comes out and it's going to just be a brief overview of the four different Covenants followed by what Covenant is best for each spec in different situations. If you enjoyed this video be sure to like and subscribe and check me out on Twitch. I'll be streaming non-stop when Shadowlands comes out every day, leveling quite a few characters and doing a ton of dungeons. All right, so the first covenant that we are covering is Kyrian. The Kyrian's job is to guide souls from the land of the living to the land of the dead, and Bastion is their realm. Uh, realm is basically the, the home world of each covenant. Everything is sort of angel-themed. Think like Valhalla, uh, if it didn't have a budget, it's like extremely extravagant architecture, super beautiful. I love Bastion, huge fan of this zone. Uh, their signature ability is Summon Steward. So this basically calls out this little Swolkin. Uh, I can barely say that word without laughing. And he brings you out what is basically a potion that restores 20% of your health and removes all curses, diseases, poisons, bleeds, the steward also has rotating abilities. These abilities are things like giving that potion to your allies, uh, making the potion heal for 40% of your health instead of 20%, and boosting your damage and healing by 40% for 15 seconds. All right, if angels and beautiful architecture are not your thing, there are the necro lords. Necro lords are great for people who like everything covered in slime and you like all of your armor to have bones on it. Their realm is Maldraxxus. It's a... Uh, this like weird sort of dystopian world where everything is dead and covered in green slime. So the Necro Lord's signature ability is Fleshcraft. This gives you a bubble, basically a, a shield that absorbs 20% of your maximum health. It lasts two minutes. It's a four second channel and it's intended to be channeled on the corpses of powerful enemies. So if you were to channel this over, you know, some dead elite, it could actually boost the shield to absorb 50% of your maximum health instead of 20%. All right, so if you're a fan of lurking in the shadows because no one understands you, the Venthyr might be your covenant. Revendreth is pretty awesome. It is a vampire-themed realm, and it is a little bit cliche with all the gargoyles and, you know, gothic architecture, but it is still really cool, especially if you like inexplicable pools of blood everywhere. The signature ability of the Venthyr is Door of Shadows. This is incredibly strong for PvP. It's more or less a blink, but it's a 1.5 second cast, and it lets you choose where you teleport to. So it will send you through the shadows to the targeted area. And this is apparently the graphic for it. I, I did not make this on Microsoft Paint. This is actually from an in-game screenshot. I'm sure it'll look better in the actual live game. I am not going to make too many jokes about the Night Fae because chances are the four people who are planning on going Night Fae aren't even watching this video. In all seriousness, though, the Night Fae are pretty cool, especially if you're into this kind of aesthetic or if you're just able to look past it. They have a forest full of centaurs, giant fairies, radioactive trees, and I'm not even trying to make fun. It's just a very unique forest aesthetic, even for World of Warcraft. The Night Fae signature ability is Soul Shape, and it's actually really awesome. It teleports you 15 yards forward, and it increases your movement speed by 50% for the next 12 seconds. You can continue to cast Soul Shape in these 12 seconds every few seconds, so you can get a few casts of it off. And the thing that I think is the coolest about this is it lasts indefinitely in a rested area. So if you're on an RP server, you can pretty much expect that every major city is going to be full of vulpins or just these ghost foxes. It is a really unique aesthetic, and it's not necessarily my cup of tea, but it's pretty cool. Uh, I think that Night Fae is hopefully going to see some improvements to their covenant abilities just because Night Fae is the best covenant for less specs than any other covenant. Now, I don't want to come across as biased. Obviously, some of these covenants are really going to appeal to some people based solely off of their aesthetic and the general vibe of their realm. And I think that that's really important to start this part off with. Look, they're, you know, Frost DK. Uh, their best raid and Mythic Plus covenant is the Venthyr. But if you play Frost DK and you hate vampires or you just really like, you know, bright and fluffy scenery... 
You don't have to go Venthyr. You really don't. Is it the best? Yes, it is. But that doesn't mean that you are locked into this. There are still choices that you can make in this game, and I do think that Covenant is one of them. For most people, the slight difference in their overall damage output is not really going to make that much of a difference to the point that you need to make your new home city in Shadowlands your least favorite place ever. I think that it's going to be a little harder for healers and tanks to ignore what is best for them, especially in early content, because everyone is going to need every edge that they can possibly get. But I just, I don't want people feeling like they're trapped, they're locked into this one covenant because their spec is listed underneath that covenant. Now, for some specs, you're going to see the name in multiple different places on this screen. That's because specs like Guardian Druid, they have more options to be top tier than, well, actually for Guardian Druid than for any other spec. But there are the ones that are the best, but that doesn't mean that you have to go with that. I think it's important to remember that the other people who have the same covenant as you are going to be like your Shadowlands roommates. They're going to be the people that are in the same city as you all the time. And you can look around here and you can see some of these are much more popular than others. Kyrian is huge. Uh, Kyrian is absolutely going to be the most popular covenant. And not that I'm biased or anything, but like I'm okay with it. Uh, but, you know, for someone like me, I am not going to be Necrolord. I'm just not. I don't like this dingy, slimy aesthetic. It's not for me. I mean, the, Maldraxxus is like if Nax Ramus and, like, grosser Nax Ramus had a super gross little baby. It just doesn't appeal to me. Uh, that's not something that I would go, and it doesn't matter what spec I'm on, I'm probably not going to play Necrolord. It also works out fairly well because I don't play any of those specs. But really, I just, I don't want people thinking that they have to go a certain covenant. Play what you like, play what you want, and if you're not cutting edge, it probably will not make a huge difference. Let me know what covenant you are most excited to play in Shadowlands in the comments below. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. If you're looking for something to watch or someone to chat with while you're getting into the swing of things with Shadowlands, check me out on Twitch. I'll be streaming every day for the first few weeks, at least, in Shadowlands. And as always, thanks for watching.